Howdy folks, uh, welcome back to the next video. Um, this is the second in the series of looking at trying to create a, a bass that sounds like a wall but doesn't cost as much and doesn't look like a wall uh, at the end of everything as well. Um, just to kind of briefly run through the specs, if you haven't seen the first video, I've got a squire base, or rather a squire base neck with uh, rosewood and maple. I've got an alder bodied base. I've got Turner multi coil pickups, which allow a series or parallel or single coil or single row mode switching. For the purposes of this video, it's going to stay in parallel for both pickups because that's the closest to the wiring of the wall bases. And uh, the difference between this video and the last one is now I've got the Lucid Hand preamp instead of the ACG preamp uh, in place. Um, very briefly, the Lucid Hand preamp is um, a system that's a little bit simpler than the ACG. We've got volume, we've got blend, and we've got a low pass filter uh, knob per pickup, which um, you can adjust and also you can do a boost at the resonant peak frequency as well. Um, much as you can on a on a wall preamp uh, as well. So without too much ado, I'm going to take you through the pickups and then a little bit through adjusting the system and, and blending between the pickups and some of the tones that you can get from uh, moving between the various pickups and what the preamp sounds like. So without too much ado, we're going to get to the front pickup first and just see what the system sounds like using that. That's what that sounds like. Um, and then we'll start rolling it off and seeing what it sounds like as we do that. And then a bit further. take it down further again. see about trying to get it nearly all the way down. And then finally, right the way down. to the resonance do, does. So I pull up on the knob and I turn it back up and we now have got um, quite a significant, somewhere in the region of 6 to 10 dB boost of the resonant peak. Neat trick makes it very bright um, because the, the way the preamp is voiced, um, it goes up a bit higher than typical wall preamp. So when you boost the resonance right at the top, you'll get, it'll act a bit like a bright switch. So let's try rolling it down a bit. Take it down another couple of 
notches. And then another notch or two. Like a really honky precision pickup almost there. Same. Take it down another notch or so. Okay, and then right at the very bottom of the treble. So that's around about 150 hertz, so you can really hear the low mids just blooming out there. We'll set that back to open, and now we'll just hear what the rear pickup has got to sound like on its own as well. Um, just make sure the resonance is all the way open. It is. Okay, and then we'll start lowering the resonant peak on that. Same again, lower it down another notch. Another notch. And another one. honk out there and we'll take it down another notch and another one and then right at the bottom of travel Hmm. So that's that one. And then if you again boost the resonance on the rear pickup and start playing it with the same way, then obviously it becomes a much brighter pickup. And then we'll take it down a notch. Again. 
Right, another notch down. And another one. Getting really honky here. And then we're near the end of the getting near the end of the travel. Down another notch, just about at the end. All right, and then we're at the end of it. Okay, so that is what the rear pickup sounds like on its own. Um, I probably cheated you a little bit here. I haven't really given you a, a flavor of the system just as it sounds with everything blended. So I'm going to swap to all that now. system or pretty bright as, as uh, a lot of bass systems go and I think it is a bit brighter than the wall um, at rest. Uh, sorry with all the uh, controls um, at zero. Um, the next thing to do is to show you some of the potential of trying different combinations of things and what it sounds like when you get into the magic of blending the pickups and doing different things with pickups and boosting one pickup one way and rolling off another one the other way, etc. Um, probably the simplest one um, for the kind of the chili pepper sound is probably just to roll very slightly towards the front pickup. <laughs> Nice, full, meaty kind of sound. Probably that flea sound is just a lot about how hard you hit the strings, which is probably why I can't play it perfectly. I just have to concentrate more on, on hitting the strings hard. Um, but that translates well through the, the system. Put everything back to zero. Um, there's a few really cool tones. Well, in fact, there's loads of cool tones. It's really hard to actually pin them all down, but I made some notes about some interesting ones. Um, 
boosting the bridge pickup with the uh, resonance boost and then rolling back the front pickup very slightly. some really kind of honkier sounds. Um, if we turn the bridge pickup all the way down to zero and roll off the front one, not boosted, down quite low. <laughs> Very deep, honky. Maybe we can get a little bit more out of that, out of the front pickup. I'm just gonna take it up to about four. Yeah, it's maybe a bit better. Yeah, really honky. Cool. That's a nice one. Um, then there was a kind of a rounder sound I found by rolling this, rolling the rear pickup boosted down a couple of notches, and then the front pickup again unboosted. It's about I'm going to call it a six out of ten. So that's fun. Then you can put every, you can unboost everything and put it back to um, fully open on both knobs and then bring both the boosts up and you get a much brighter, you're really emphasizing that high end here. So you can get a much brighter kind of sound um, for slapping and similar sorts of things. There's another kind of uh, just general finger style tone that works pretty well just by rolling both knobs off to about seven or thereabouts. It's tricky when the knobs don't have numbers, more of which I'll talk about later. And then I guess you can get more into the kind of the Jacoey kind of stuff if you want. Roll off towards the back pickup. <laughs> And you can boost the back pickup and roll it off. Probably not quite as... There we go. That's a bit more what I was looking for. And then if you want, you can get some more beef out of the front pickup by rolling that one all the way down and then blending in a little bit of that too. Thank you. 
Might try a little bit more rolling off that front pickup. In fact, sorry, rolling more to the front pickup. Yeah, not bad. Um, or you can go for that kind of continuum kind of sound. Might roll right back to the back pickup for this. I think uh, you've probably got a flavour of the system. Um, there's a huge amount that I like about this. Um, the system itself is flexible, very flexible. Um, I'll come on to that in just a minute. It sounds great. It's got a sort of a chewiness to the tone. Definitely it introduces some kind of harmonic distortion, something that's very pleasing to the ear anyway. Um, the ACG system, by comparison, is very clean and clear, but it's definitely not... Yeah, it doesn't have this kind of extra um, chewiness about it that the Lucid Hand system has. So I really like that. I think it does bring it closer to a well because the well system is not clean. It's not pristine. There is something slightly grindy and, and dirty about it sort of thing. Um, you can, yeah, you, I think you can get a lot out of this system. Um, you can definitely get the bright kind of top end, more top end than you can get out of a wall. You've essentially got two mid controls um, and you can do a lot with the, the magic of blending between the pickups. Um, I've only scratched the surface because of the, the shortness of the video, really. Uh, it, it, it's a fantastic system. Um, that said, um, I think there are a couple of cons. Uh, uh, just speaking broadly, I need to buy some number knobs. I can't really t replicate exactly what I'm doing each time I'm doing it. I need to buy some number knobs. Fortunately, there are some number knobs that are sold, uh, not by Wall, but by others, that will um, suit this purpose. So that'll work fine once I get a hold of them. Um, the second kind of issue, and this is more specific to the Lucid Hand preamp, is that you can't really boost the bass on this. Um, with the Wall system, listening to it, I think it goes down to about 80 hertz or something similar. Um, this goes down to about 150, gives you a lot of control over the mids, much more granular control over the mids, I think, probably than the wall, um, because this has got a, na a narrower frequency range that you're trying to select over. But at the end of the day, with the wall, you, you can control the low end. Um, you, get, you can control the mids, and you can also alter the uh, top end with the bright switch. With this system, you can alter the top end and you can control the mids very well, I think, but you can't really control the bass. You have to do that from your amp. So that's probably my second issue, um, but it's part of the design really. You know, it's it's a design choice. Um, it's what Nuno at Lucid Hand wanted. So um, you can debate that one way or the other. If you were to get Nuno to make a custom version of this amp, I think it would work and you could slide it lower, but it probably would need a bright switch separately. Um, I'd probably like that. I'd probably like it if it worked very similarly to the wall, but, um, you know, it's a design choice, isn't it? He doesn't want it to go as low um, and therefore you get more granular control of the mids and you have a pretty good control already of the top end through using the resonance uh, boosts, you know, the pull-up boosts on the knobs. So, yeah, it's a fair comment. 
In terms of how I'm doing with uh, my design goal of trying to make a base that sounds like a wall, I think the loose at hand is a step closer um, than using the ACG system. Whilst the ACG system is definitely more flexible, um, a lot like the wall, even more flexible than the wall preamp, it's much cleaner. And uh, the loose at hand is sort of gritty and grindy uh, and that's what the wall sounds like as well. So I think we're getting another step closer. We're not all the way there. It still sounds like a sort of a, a fender version of the wall sound, I assume because of the neck and the body. Um, so in the next video, um, to try and um, experiment and, and take us on to the next step and, and change a bit at the time, I'm going to attach a new neck to the system, which is a multi-laminate jazz bass neck. Very nice one made by a guy called Andy Rogers on Bass Chat. And we'll see if this alters the sound um, and what it makes it sound like. I'm, I'm hoping it'll bring out a bit more in the low mids, but it may well be that I also need to change the body um, to a mahogany body. Some people think the body um, carries a lot of the sound. I'm probably of the, the view that maybe it doesn't carry quite so much, but, you know, maybe a bit. Um, but we'll do this step next and take it from there. See you guys next time. Thanks.